Welcome to the Soul Script Podcast. Here we explore how to unlock the power of our story. Our journey here on Earth can be one of deep passion, intentional creation, and personal transformation. The only thing holding us back is our stories. Come and join me as we rewrite and reignite. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Soul Script Podcast. I am your host, Lara Titanser, and today we have a very special guest. He is actually my very first guest on the Soul Script Podcast. So we are talking to David Buchanan, and today our topic specifically is about creation, why we create, how we should be creating, what a good creation process looks like, among many other things that we hit on in this podcast episode. David is a very wise human being, and I cannot wait to share our conversation with you. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Well, good morning, David. How are you? I'm good. It's good. Uh, Monday morning, March 11th. <laughs> uh, and you were sick, but are you feeling better? I feel so much better. Um, my sinuses, like, what? like, even last week when we talked, and I know the audio didn't work for that and all whatever, but like, I feel in a much clearer headspace today than I did even a week ago, so. Yeah, I was going to say, you you seem a little bit more spunky, a little bit more, you know, <laughs> yeah, here. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more present. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, well, for those who don't know, this is David Buchanan, and our relationship goes back to my birth, at least, <laughs> because David is my cousin. That's right. We're cousins. Wild. <laughs> I know. And the funny thing is, is that uh, we've talked about this previously, but like we kind of lost touch for a long time. And then I was going through this faith journey, faith exploration, and you reached out and you were like, hey, if you ever want to have lunch or like get together or anything, I would love to do it and just like kind of support you or talk to you about what you're going through. And so then we got together and had lunch and I was like, oh my gosh, like David, we need to hang out. I'm and so then, glad we did. I'm yes, so glad we did. Yes. And then the other part is that then I moved and I moved like, I don't even know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes away from you. It's probably 15 minutes away. Yeah. Yeah. And so we've been able to get together and we Marco Polo all the time. And it's just fun because you don't know what the future holds or, you know, your relationships can ebb and flow. So I'm, I'm glad that we've reconnected though. Yeah. It's kind of a wild journey yeah. if you try to like think about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so David, can you just like give our listeners just a little bit of background about you? And specifically we are talking today about like creation. That's just the general theme is creation. So you as a very creative being, I want you to give us like a little bit of a background just about you and then maybe, I don't know, your creativity. <laughs> sure, sure. So uh, as, as you heard, we are cousins. So we have a very similar upbringing. We were both raised LDS and uh, we both had a similar, well, not, I wouldn't say similar, but we both had a, a faith transition away from that religion into a much more of a just spiritual outlook on life, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, and I actually went through like ex Mormon to like atheist, hardcore atheist <laughs> into yeah. this very like, well, I don't really know what anything is anymore. So <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but I I guess my creativity, I've always been a creative person. I I I actually went to school for graphic design. I initially started school um going to school for computer animation. And um that didn't pan out, mostly because I talked to a um animator 
who said that like getting a job in computer animation is like becoming an actor. You have to have like an agent and you have these different reels and you have to send your reels to different studios. And it's like, that's not really the life you want to have when you have like a family and kids and all of that. So I basically decided, well, I want to be creative in some way. I guess I'll be a designer. So I went to school for graphic design, which fell into user experience design and product design. And so I work in my day job as a product manager, uh, which is um, a software thing that I help software people make software. Uh, <laughs> it's a very, it's a very creative thing. Most people think of it as a very business thing, but I came at it from a design perspective and it's, and it, all it is is it's context and constraints and trying to solve, come up with solutions based off of that, which is all creativity in and of itself is yeah. you have a context and constraints and you have something you want to do. So. Well, and it also is very fitting for your projector human design uh, type. And we have talked about human design on this podcast. If you go back, um, you can see I've got three episodes talking about, you know, kind of basic information about human design and David is a projector and that's exactly what a projector does is they kind of see a system they see what's like could be improved in the system and then offer advice on that that, that you just described my day job um in a way that I probably couldn't describe it in a better way than what you just said so. <laughs> yeah. yeah so you're just like living in your design just naturally without even consciously doing it so okay continue on um, okay, so a handful of years ago, I guess probably right around peak COVID time, 2021, I was working at a very dead end job, uh, working for a tech startup that was failing that I'd put so much of my identity into. Um, and I broke my foot. And at this moment, I had to completely rethink how I was living my life. Because I was I was going through essentially a midlife crisis. I was shaving my head every day. I was like bald, like bald, shaving it bald. And I was just like, I need to do something for me. And I had fallen out of creativity. I think that with COVID and the world and all of these things going on, I was like, I can't pay attention to all of that and still be creative. And so what I started to do was just set aside time to just pick up a pencil, pick up a sketchbook, pick up and just start doodling. And I actually created an Instagram account where I was just like, I set a goal where I'm like, I'm going to create art every day and post it for myself. And I don't care about followers. I don't care about who likes it. I'm just going to post it for me. Yeah, I didn't even know this about you, David. One, I had no idea that you broke your foot or that you were shaving your head or that you had an Instagram page. <laughs> well, there's a lot of things you probably don't know about me. <laughs> we need to hang out more, I guess. So, um, yeah, I mean, creativity uh, to me has opened up spirituality. Creativity has changed my life. And just even just... Even just that exercise of being able to create art for myself was really like me learning how to, like, all of the things, all these spiritual and healers and all these people talk about is like, be in your body and just like, feel your feelings. And I was able to just feel those feelings and then just put them into art. And then once I was able to just like, I can just make art for me, then it was taking those same feelings about creativity and applying it to the rest of my life. It was not just being creative in that I can create art, but being creative in that I can create a life for myself that I would like to live rather than feeling like life is happening to me. Yeah, I love that, David. And I really especially like what you said about like just creating for yourself. And it's something that I have been dwelling on. And actually the whole reason why I wanted this podcast subject is because, you know, I have a running list in my phone of podcast ideas. And a while ago I had written something down that just like, 
it was one of those ideas that just came to my head and I wasn't quite sure why I put it in there, but it was something along the lines of is art or other creation worth doing even if nobody sees it, even if nobody is a witness to it. And honestly, I think that this came up like for my own journey of being like, hey, hey, Lara, like start creating for yourself. And that was like the original seed planted in my mind. And I have realized since then that there's almost nothing in my life that I have created just for me. That's mm. like kind of sad to admit, but almost everything has been like either to prove myself worthy or to make money or whatever it might be. It's always been for somebody else. And so that has been on the forefront of my mind is just creation for yourself. Yeah, I completely resonate with that because as I as a designer, I was always designing. I was always being creative for other people. And yeah. it was always like I would, you know, I'd go to work all day, work nine to five, work on all these designs or whatever. And then I would come home and I would just be burned out. I would just be like, I don't want to, I don't want to create it anymore. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I totally get that too. When you're like, when it suddenly turns into a job, then all of a sudden it's like, you don't want to do it for yourself anymore. Yep. What is the, uh, what is the phrase? The, the cobbler's kids shoes are always the worst off or something like that, right? Like <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Well, and I have to like change my mind a little bit on that statement because that I stated before, because I actually did start creating videos as just like family history for like of our trips and things like mm -hmm. that. And then it did turn into a job. And so then next thing I was like editing for other people or I was editing for my own personal gain within, you know, the, I don't know, the world of videography, right? Uh, hustle culture gotcha. You, and you, you had to turn it into a late stage capitalism told you you had to make your ho hobby into a side gig. Yes, exactly. And so I actually have like on my hard drive for trips that we went on. Cause that's my typical thing is I document the trips that we go on. And so I have four different trips on my hard drive that I have not edited because I'm burnt out on editing. Cause I did it like so hardcore for other people. And actually I did it not within my human design. Cause I am mm. as well a projector, but I was working like a generator. So I was working like 10 hours a day and just like, pounding out stuff every single day, sometimes on Saturdays and have just been like so burnt out on editing that I had to take a break from it. And now that I've taken that break, I have started being drawn to like, I need to go back to these old trips and start like editing them and creating for my kids. Cause actually recently my kids have been going onto my YouTube channel and they've been watching these videos of themselves on trips when oh, they were like babies. And I was like, wow, this is really important for them. And I really want to document this family history for me as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think that most people, right. I think that creativity gets kind of pushed into these buckets of like editing film or painting or creating art or sculpture or whatever it might be. Yeah. But I think that if you can shift your perspective about creativity and make it more about like, I, so that, that let me take, take a step back. So <laughs> in, in the ancient Greek uh, philosophy, they have the logos, which is up here, or thymos, which is your spirit. And that's and in your have... chest. So the logos is in your head space above it or like in the it, head space? It, it's kind of just here. Just it's the what what I like to say is the logos is like it's it's the logic, it's the intellect, it's the thing that's like watching everything happen. Okay, got it. It's also what's also providing judgment and everything. But anyways, yeah. But inside here in your chest is a lion, and they called it the thymos. Okay. And this is like your spirit, your zest, your, your, your like energy. But then you also have down lower is a monster called okay. Eros. Eros. 
And these are all actually forms of love in the form in Greek um, um, philosophy. philosophy. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yes. Greek philosophy that the love of the, the man up here is one of like, I can tell you how to fix this. The love of this here is I want social collaboration. Okay. And the love down here is I want creation. So this okay. eros is usually tied with sex. Yeah. But it's also like just a, a drive for a passionate, creative life. Yeah. Yeah. And absolutely. so in Greek philosophy, what they say is living a spiritual life is when the logos the thymos and the eros is all living in harmony. When the, when the man inside has tamed the lion and controlled the monster. I freaking love that you just said that because I just feel like you explained to me kind of the process that I personally am going through right now. Like that was amazing. Thank you. <laughs> well, thanks. I, I that's just, you know, that's just how I look at the world sometimes is I have these different drives and these different energies and they can get out of balance. Yeah. Right. My logical brain can hyper fixate and get stuck on something in the future that causes anxiety or stress. Yeah. My, my thymos can get out of that, out of, you know, out of boundaries and I can start like giving too much to other people. Yeah. And then my arrows can get out of, you know, out of boundaries and I can start, you know, like, you know, things happen. So, you know, like love, romance, sexuality, like yes, that's yeah. usually what happens when your arrows is out of control, right? Like yes. it's when you have these, this boundaries and you can like play in this space of like, no, these aren't bad things. These are just part of human, hu human uh, humanity, human nature. Yeah. And that like, if we're able to control and work with them, like you can live a very creative life. You're you're vocalizing what I have been thinking about, but not able to vocalize that. And through this journey for me, um, and maybe I actually need to back up a little bit. Can I share a story with you? Absolutely. Okay. So you were um, actually the last time that you talked you kind of were talk. you just mentioned briefly about how sometimes the education system can teach us that creativity needs to look a certain way, which you were touching on just barely, mm -hmm. that it doesn't have to look like doing painting or being a, mag a magician, a musician, but it could be a magician, it right? It could be a magician. <laughs> yes. But, you know, typical, the typical education system doesn't support all forms of creativity. And when I was in the third grade, I essentially was told that I have a learning disorder because I was failing at both math and reading. So, you know, I was reading super under grade level and I just kind of got it in my head from that time forward that I would never be a reader, that I would be a horrible writer and that I should just give up at that point. And that continued like through high school. I just basically made like I would get C's just to pass an English class, right? And um, so in my adult years, when people like read, you know, they just sit down and they just get into a book and a story. I just couldn't even fathom that. I was like, oh, reading, that's gross. I don't read. And um, I would read, but I would only read like self-help books, which fits with me because I am like always striving, like how do people function? How do we get better? You know? And I think that's projector, uh, a projector attitude. Almost but, every projector I know is addicted to self-help books. Yes. And I love how you said addicted because it really can get to the point where it's like too much and you just, mm -hmm. you, I feel like almost the process is going through this whole journey of like gathering all this information about how people work and then just like coming back down and just simplifying it to just love yourself, love other people. And like, I mean, those were the commandments of, of God, right? The first and second commandment is love God and then love people, right? So there's love is like a basic aspect, I think, in almost any religion. Would you say that? Like it sh if we bring it down to the basic level, love is a strong component. I think what 
I think what most people and 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 it's very much influenced by our 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 history. You say God, and I immediately think of Christian God, because, especially because you were like the first commandment, and second commandment. I'm like, okay, so we are talking about Jehovah Old Testament God, like okay, yeah, yeah. because because there are like everyone, every incarnation of God out there is has some different energy and different connotations that go with it. Yeah, um, absolutely. But what I was going to say is, love is at the root of all of it, and I would say that Christian love more so New Testament God and, and Jesus and Christianity yes. is, is a different kind of love. Yes. It's, it's a, what, what is termed in, in philosophy as agapic love from the Greek word agape, okay. which is a forgiving love. Okay. You are giving love before receiving love. Oh, Okay. And so what happens in an agapic love is how you have to live a creative life is because you are giving love to this thing that you're trying to creatively give energy to yeah, without it giving anything in return. Yeah. Cause you're doing it for yourself, right? Exactly. Like the two true creation. And now we can connect that back to, to just an expression of love in general. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. I love that. Okay. Thank you. That was a huge side tangent, but I think an important <laughs> side tangent. <laughs> okay. I don't even remember where we were. How did we get? Oh, because I was like obsessed with self-help, right? Mm -hmm. And it can become a lot. And then bringing it back down to just love yourself. Um, and then as you love yourself, you can then love other people and then kind of receive that love back as well. But there's no mm -hmm. expectation of receiving love back. Okay. So now that we've summarized that, so I would read tons and tons of self-help books, but there was never any um, room for just like, I'm just going to sit and I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm going to get into this story. And so I was just like, I'm not a reader. I don't like that kind of stuff. I'm not a storyteller. I don't like stories. And then I started becoming a videographer and essentially like editing is telling a story, <laughs> right? I'm going to, I'm going to argue everything is a story. Yeah. From the second, from the second you wake up in the morning to the minute you go to sleep at night, your brain, your consciousness is telling you telling a story, infinite amount of stories before yeah. you are actually even able to react. Yes, absolutely. And I totally see that as well of our whole lives are just, we just paint a picture of our lives based off of a story that we're telling ourselves. Exactly. So that's yeah. why when you talk about like spiritual people, they talk about like manifesting your reality or you create your reality. That's all it means is what story are you telling yourself? Mm -hmm. And maybe that story is you're not creative or maybe yeah. that story is you're not a good reader. Yes. And all exactly. that is, is a prison inside your brain that tells you that you can't do these things. Yeah, absolutely. And so uh, I remember somebody telling me like, you know, editing is a form of storytelling. And it was just like, oh, that's interesting. Like maybe I am creative. Maybe I have a creative outlet. Because also I never had this creative outlet as we're talking like traditional form of creativity. My sister was the artistic one. So I couldn't be artistic because she was the artistic one. You know, all of these things that we tell ourselves mm -hmm. in youth. And so I just had this idea just planted in my brain about like you could be creative. So fast forward to um, to this last December. And for some reason, the weirdest thing happened. I don't know why necessarily, but I got this like hankering to read a book, like a fiction Ooh. book. Okay. What was it? So, well, hold on. <laughs> okay, 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 sorry. Let's your it story. wasn't a specific book though. I just was like, had this idea in mind, like, I just want to read a book. And then I also was like, I'm going to pull out my guitar. I really want to like play my guitar, which I haven't played in years. And it was just kind of this building energy of like, kind of, I wanted to create or I wanted to kind of like get in that headspace 
of a traditional form of creation, right? And so January, it was like January 1st. And this wasn't like, it wasn't some kind of a life New Year's, resolution. New Year's resolution. No, it was nothing like that. But my daughter, Denali, is this huge reader. She read like over a hundred books in 2000 or 2023. And um, she really likes to buy every book that she reads. So she's like creating this library in her bedroom. So one day I go downstairs to her bedroom and I'm like, okay, Denali, can you give me a book to read? <laughs> and she's like, oh what you want a book to read like this is the craziest thing in the whole world this is so awesome and she was like you know which one which one do I give her and she ended up giving me Island of Blue Dolphins I don't know if you've ever read that one no I haven't. that's okay it was actually a book the actual physical book was one that I had in childhood like my mom bought it for me to read and like, okay. there's no way I was going to read it. Right. But I ended up with some of our childhood books and gave them to Denali. So I think that's kind of interesting that I was reading a book that my mom gave me in childhood and I never read. And so I read this book. It was just a, it's a pretty short, easy story. But afterwards I was like, oh my gosh, I like reading. This is crazy. So then since then, since like January 1st, I have read, I think like six books, fiction oh, wow. books. And it's just like absolutely unheard of. If, if you were to tell me even like a year ago that I would just be sitting reading fictional books, I would call you absolutely crazy. Okay, so the story continues. So she gave me a book that I fell in love with. It's actually called uh, Daughter of the Moon Goddess. It's like teen fiction, but there's right. also a little love triangle. It's like has to do with Chinese mythology. And it was actually really well written. And um, the, the thing that I really liked about it is the heroine is just like strong, powerful, like can fight for the things that she loves, but also have a softness. Like she was just a really good figure in my mind of like an example of, of what I want to, I don't know, you, you read so many books like Twilight, right? And there's that same love triangle and she's like, oh my gosh, like save me. And you know, she's just kind of has no, like, I don't know, strength <laughs> personal like vindiction i don't know but she's not I've, a very i've never read twilight so i don't know it's horrible it's don't even read it it's okay horrible. all right i'll take your advice yes <laughs> so um so i really like this heroine and then there was the second book that came out and i read the whole second book and at the end of the story the author chose to essentially make her like all of those qualities that I really liked in her, like dissolved away. And I was so mad about it, like furious about it. Why is that? <laughs> David. Do, do you want to have a therapy session on this podcast? <laughs> Why do you think that oh, is, Laura? Oh no, David. Oh no. Isn't the answer like that you identify yourself with the characters? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what is that telling me, David? that there's something triggering you about losing your own power at some point and then you don't like it. Yeah, I really don't like it. Oh, and this happened with Dune. Like we just went and watched the second Dune. I had no idea that Dune was actually like a political tragedy and not a hero's journey. So I walked out of that theater pissed because I was like this is so sad like this is like heartbreaking because the main you know character Paul like basically turns into a another you know person and I was I walked out of the theater just like so mad that it didn't have like a happy ending and then it was really hard for me to come to terms with like that there are some stories that we tell ourselves, I guess, 
that don't necessarily have a happy ending. And it like shattered my whole reality because I want things to have a happy ending. And so in this other story that I was talking about, it didn't necessarily have a happy ending. <laughs> you should the see other, the look uh, that David is giving me if you're not watching the, this. On the inverse of all creativity is destruction. Yeah, we have to have the the opposition, the the uh yeah the opposite there's duality and everything yeah so if you are creating you are destroying something and whether that's destroying a story about why bad things happen or maybe it's destroying a story about losing your power or maybe it's destroying i don't know childhood trauma but <laughs> all of that is being destroyed and being transmuted when you're being created. So creative. destruction isn't necessarily like a bad thing. Destruction is just 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 destruction. <laughs> exactly. So it, it, like deconstruction. Yes. Yeah. So evolution, right, is based off of revolution. So we all know we live in these cycles, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you could talk about breaking karmic cycles. All it is is when that thing comes up again, you make a different decision. That's how you break a karmic cycle. Yeah. Is, oh, I don't fall into the same cycle. I'm breaking that karmic cycle. Well, you're still destroying something. You're creating something new out of it. Yeah. Okay. I like that. That's a really um, interesting way that I've never th thought of. And I'm glad that you're bringing it up because, yeah, having an awareness of what that's bringing up in me is very interesting. And this is one reason why I love to have conversations with you is because you're actually somebody who will challenge me. And not a lot of people will challenge me on stuff like that. Be like, Lara, like, let's talk about your crap. You know, <laughs> I talk about other people's crap as in like I help other people talk about their crap. But then like nobody comes to me and is like, Okay, let's talk about all your crap. So you like to challenge me. Well, it's mostly because I'm always doing it to myself. So <laughs> like I the I I have to, after my faith transition, I fell into a lot of philosophy. I fell into a lot of Buddhism and a, a lot of stoic philosophy and and with that even venturing into neoplatonism and platonism which is like ancient Greek philosophy about like your consciousness and your subconscious and like i think that the stoics were coming at the same thing that the buddhists were coming at from a very like the stoics were coming at it as like look you can train your brain to like live a happy life you don't have to be trapped the buddhists were saying the same thing like yeah. buddha in his first noble truth is always translated as like life is suffering Right, that's the translation. But like, what does that really mean? If you actually like break down the real translation of what Buddha's first noble truth is, is that like, you are afraid of losing agency. 100% mm -hmm. full stop. Yeah. And everything you're doing in your life, you're subconsciously giving away your agency to someone else until you realize this, you will always be asleep. That is Buddhism. I I love that because I think like the first lesson I ever learned kind of on like first aha moment that like kind of changed the whole pathway for me was taking complete responsibility for my actions, my life, and no longer allowing other people to have my power, essentially mm -hmm. taking back my own power for like the bad things that I you know, quote unquote, bad things that I did or hurt people or whatever, always taking responsibility for my actions in that way. But then taking responsibility for like being proactive in creating the life that I want to live. So you, so you just said you were saying you're being proactive in creating the life that you want to live. We're talking about creativity. Yeah. You're being proactive in creating a life. <laughs> you're saying I'm, I'm creating. Yes. Like, yeah. That's the thing is like creativity is not just painting pictures. That's yeah. a good way to practice it and get yeah. into this state of like, I'm creating, I'm making something, an idea yeah. live. But what you can also do is create a life. I have an idea for how I want to live my life. 
I can create that life. Yeah. Well, and um, there will be things, right, that, <sighs> okay, I know you're going to challenge this too. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> so there's things that do come into our life that are not in our control, right? Sure. Like maybe bad weather, like a hurricane or something comes, destroys our house. But are you saying that like we still have the ability to have a life that we want, a happy, joyful life, even through external sort or ex external turmoil or whatever? Yes, yes. Uh, and the Buddhists and, and the, the, the Buddhists would say that that when you're asleep, you're dreaming. And when you're awake, it's just a different form of dreaming. Right. <laughs> Which then is layered and layered and layered and layered. Because what happens when you wake up from that dream? Is that still a dream? <laughs> like it, it is a rabbit hole for my brain, for sure. <laughs> it's one of those things that the conscious brain doesn't have the capacity to understand. Yeah. Okay. So we need to finish up this podcast pretty soon. So I want to do two things. I want to tell you the end of my story. <laughs> yes. I cut you off. I apologize. No, no. This is what we need. We need these little side tangents that like kind of dive into this philosophy of creation and kind of like deconstructing it a little bit. Um, and then I want to give you the opportunity to tell us about like your latest creation and like a tiny bit about your process in that mm -hmm. so um okay so i read a book hated the ending and i hated it so much that i wanted to rewrite it i've never written anything like that in my life like i said you know english class i would just do the basics of what i had to do i've never picked up a pen and just written a story before and I felt like I really wanted to rewrite this story so badly. So I got out my computer and, you know, I looked at the place where it kind of, I, it started falling apart or the part in the book where I didn't like how it went and started that last sentence and then just wrote from there. And I wrote like a, I don't know if it was like, like a 30 page like document on how I wanted the story to end with like dialogue and description and all kinds of things in there. And it really pushed my, that capacity for me, but I loved the process of writing it. And I would look forward to writing that story to the point where I just wanted to get done with work or I wanted the kids to go to bed so that I could start writing the story or Andrew, my husband went out of town and I was, he's like, what did you do all weekend? Cause he took the kids. And I was like, I just wrote for like eight hours every day. Cause it brought me so much joy. And the thing that surprised me is that this was not for anybody else. I had no intention to post it online, even though Denali did tell me about fan fiction, which I had no idea that was a thing. But like, I had no intention on ever showing it to anybody. Like this was just for my satisfaction. And so going back to my original question I asked myself that brought up this podcast, is creation worth doing or creating even if you're the only one who sees it? even if it's just for you. And in that moment, I like it kind of impacted me and I felt so much joy and so much satisfaction from a creation that I just did for myself. I love that. I yeah. love that lesson. I love that lesson for you because what I think and what I think that this teaches, you probably fell into the flow state while you were writing. Yes, absolutely. And, yeah. and time disappeared. Yes. You were just in another world. You were just creating. You didn't care about food. You didn't care about drinking water. You were just like, <laughs> I need to write. Yes, absolutely. I would like to get done writing and like all of a sudden it would be dark outside and I would be like completely starving. So yes. I would argue that if you can live a creative life, you can experience flow state moments every single day. Yeah, I would love that. Like that is something I want to try and embody because I know that you've said that 
multiple times either on this podcast or to me before where it's like you don't have to sit down and like have this set aside time to create but like you can actively create and be in that flow state whenever you wish like if you're driving down the road or you're just making a decision for the day you can be in that state my my favorite is dinner time i love to cook i love yeah. to create uh cuisine right so my favorite is i will go into the kitchen i we don't make menus around here i will just go buy ingredients we're an ingredients house and yeah. i will just walk in and go i've got this 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 then this and just kind of like sit quietly and just like kind of clean up the kitchen a little bit as i think about it and then it'll be like oh that's what i'm gonna make and it will just like hit and then like i'll turn on music and it's like flow state and i will just oh my god David, I'm just freaking out right now because that has been like my routine recently. I go in, I clean the kitchen, I turn on like my favorite music, and then I just go and open the fridge and then I just like start pulling stuff out and just put it into a pot or whatever. I totally know what you're saying it's, right there. That to me is transmuting energy into creation. Oh my gosh. Okay. This is like the best conversation ever. Thank you so much, David. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's switch over to your most recent big creation. Should we say that? Cause you're sure. creating all the time, but like kind of this bigger one, I don't know. Yeah. The right way. <laughs> um, so we talked briefly about like my faith transition. When I left the LDS church, there was a big swing of like, oh, I want to go try all the things I was told not to. With that was drinking and alcohol. And I fell in love with beer. I fell in love with the process of making beer. We're talking about the creative process and alchemy. Like creating beer is alchemy. You take grain and flowers and water and yeast and you make this beverage that not only can taste good well most people think it tastes pretty gross but can taste good but like <laughs> can can make you feel a certain way right yeah. like everyone knows what alcohol does um during my midlife crisis whatever we talked about earlier where i was shaving my head yeah. i was also drinking a lot a lot a lot and it it never ever got to the point of like I'm an alcoholic. You know, you you hear those stories where it's like people can't make it through the day. They're drinking first thing in the morning. I never was like the stereotypical like alcoholic. Yeah. But I had definitely developed an unhealthy dependence on alcohol. And through this midlife crisis, through this creation that I was doing, this creativity and, and kind of awakening, refining myself through this process, um, I was sitting in meditation and it was literally like everything in the universe was telling me like, you need to stop drinking like everything. And so I, wow. I applied my skill set from brewing beer and going, look, I need to replace this with something. I need to replace mm -hmm. this with something healthy. So I started making non-alcoholic beverages. Um, this is probably 2021 was when my first one I did. I did a, it was just a sparkling tea beverage. Um, and then I started uh, getting into cannabis, cannabis, CBD um, mostly. And I was making CBD based beverages. I did some matcha and some hibiscus ones. They were delicious. And I started to like, this there might be something to this because i'm cutting out my alcohol consumption significantly yeah and then i started talking to some people in the beverage industry and they were like don't touch anything with cannabis just don't even touch it <laughs> and they're like especially like in utah, wasting your time especially in utah like don't even and i was like all right well what can i do so then i went online we have the genius of the internet in our pockets yeah. at all times and i started just what are the herbs that you know fda says are safe that i could go find and start experimenting with yeah and so i started making tea with um some kana extract i started playing with some kava extract uh some different uh herbs adaptogens tulsi basil some flowers jasmine like i was playing around with all sorts of stuff and i finally came up with like a recipe 
that actually made me feel really, really good. Yeah. And it tasted good. And so then I was basically like, I'm going to make this a thing. And so it was actually March 13th. No, no, sorry. March 8th. March 8th, 2023. You know that date. <laughs> March 8th, 2023. Well, it's because I did the human design and bean keys for the Bodhi Bubbles. Anyway. Uh, oh my gosh, I love that so much, David. <laughs> so um, I created Bodhi Bubbles, which I went to a food, uh, a beverage consultant in Southern California, mm -hmm. who they actually helped develop some pretty famous um, energy drinks and juice-based beverages that are out on the market. Um, I don't want to say anything about what those might be, but um, they helped me create a recipe that is all FDA generally regarded as safe ingredients. Mm -hmm. um, that is about 10 to 15 calories per serving. And I like to say it tastes like bliss, as you can taste bliss. Yeah, he, um, has, he has some posters behind him that are about that, or that are an advertisement, right? A poster for these this drink, and it says taste bliss. Yes. So I am, yeah. So about a year ago, this process kind of started and I, you know, I didn't know, I didn't know what it was going to turn into. If it was just going to like, if, if I was going to talk to those beverage consultants and they're like, get out of here, like, you, we, this is not going to work out like, or if it was going to work, but every single time that I've taken a step toward it, the universe or whatever, just kind of puts it into place and mm -hmm. things just are aligning and happening. And so, um, yeah, uh, we're running our first production run um, this month. I'm waiting on one more supplier, I'm trying okay. to pay an invoice on that. But um, <laughs> then we will have our production run. Um, we're trying to get that nailed down and scheduled in the next couple of weeks. But yeah. we will be doing our first production run of two flavors of mango meta and blueberry bliss Bodhi bubbles so Bodhi bubbles the name Bodhi bubbles comes from buddhism so the bodhi tree is the tree that buddha sat under when he uh, contemplated reality and gained enlightenment he sat there for many days um but also there is in Buddhism, there is what's called the Bodhisattva vow, which is to relieve suffering. And so I felt like those went hand in hand with a drink that will help people stop drinking alcohol. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also to like help them heal because the point of this beverage is not only is it going to help with stress and anxiety, um, it's got lion's mane in there, which uh, helps regrow neurons. It helps with your stress, it helps with anxiety, but it also helps your gut microbiome. Um, we have uh, Zembrin, which is a uh, FDA approved Kana extract. Kana is a South African succulent plant that the sand people of South Africa for generations, thousands of years would chew on the leaves, the, 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 the leaves of the succulent plant when they would go out hunting. And it would boost their mood. It would help them with their hunting skills. It would do all these things. Well, it wasn't until maybe 20, 30 years ago that they started like isolating and like figuring out what this is. And so they've yeah. now isolated this extract and it is clinically proven to help with stress, anxiety, but not only like help with it in the moment, like acute stress, mm -hmm. but also to help build up resiliency to stress. Yeah. So that when stressful things happen in the future, you're able to handle them better. That's so um, awesome. We also have some adaptogens, um, Tulsi basil, which uh, is an adaptogen that is most well known for helping to decrease cortisol stress. Okay. Um, which most people know what that is. Yes. That is like, it help, makes you gain weight and it keeps you yes. up in the night and all the Unfortunately, I am very familiar <laughs> with cortisol. <laughs> <laughs> so, then there's also uh, go to cola. So go to cola helps your digestion, but also the ancient uh, Himalayan yogis used to make tea out of it, um, and they would say that they could meditate for hours. Um, so it helps with your focus. It helps with like being able to really understand like being present in a, in the present moment. Um, we also have um, 
Damiana, which is a, a shrub, a bush that comes from Central and uh, Central and North America, right along the Mexico Texas border. Really, the okay. Mayans, the Mayans used it. They would oh, smoke awesome. it. They would make tea with it. But it, what it was, it's it, uh, it helps with your sexual health, but mm -hmm. also it helps with. It's an aphrodisiac, they say. Um, and it also helps, uh, it gives you what they say is a, a mild cannabis-like um, high. Like, yeah. It's just kind of like a very calming, but very like, oh, like, I feel really good right now. I feel chill. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then there's um, a specific form of magnesium called um, magnesium l 3 8 that is scientifically been proven to cross the blood-brain barrier. It helps mm. to regrow neurons. If you've got brain fog. If uh, you've got issues with uh, not being able to pay attention in meetings, maybe like <laughs> this is the stuff that like I can drink this stuff on like at two o'clock on a on a Friday or uh, to a two o'clock on a Wednesday and like sit in for a whole afternoon of meetings and I can just like be laser focused, take it all the notes. I'm not like, oh, I don't want to be here. It's just like, boop, I'm there. Yeah. yeah. Are, are any of these ingredients like addictive in any way? No. Yeah. So it's like a way better alternative than alcohol at like on all fronts. It's not addictive. It actually brings clarity, but also a sense of peace and calm, which I think is, you know, maybe one reason why um, we drink alcohol is like maybe a little bit of calm, but I think it does it through like pulling you out of like reality rather than being like hyper-focused or like in presence. Yeah, so a big, I mean, I can only speak for myself. A big reason I drank was social anxiety. I would drink when I would go out and around people because I didn't know how to be around people. Mm. Um, and then it was also just like stress. Like I've been at work all day long. And I'm like, oh, I need a beer, you know, like. Yeah. I, but it's the goal with Bodhi Bubbles is literally just like, hey, life's hard. You don't need to drink a poison, which is alcohol. Drink yeah. this. It's it's all natural. Here's all the studies that say like this is how it will help you. And mm -hmm. just give it a chance. Because I've been drinking it a lot and my life has changed yeah. over the last year. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, so, and I have I have consumed Bodhi bubbles as well. And you tried you tried my last commercial formulation from the my uh, consultant. So you've tried the final product. Oh, okay, yeah. So I have tried this final product, and it I didn't really expect it to have the um, amount of effect that you claimed, right? So I was like, okay, like maybe I'll feel something, maybe I won't feel something. But after I had consumed it, I really was super chill. And like, that's the only way that I can describe it is just so chill. And so not, these aren't just like- But not in a bad like, way. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like, not like, uh, like cannabis gets this yeah, like, of I'm like, gonna oh, I'm gonna go smoke weed couch. and just sleep on the couch, right? On it's not tunes. like that. yeah no 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 it's just like it is a stress reliever i think is what it really like maybe that's a better description for it is just um all of those stresses are not in the forefront of my mind and i feel a lot calmer about what's going on and i can be more present so what i like to say is yeah we say uh, my our tagline is taste bliss what yeah. I like to say is that every can of Bodhi Bubbles gives you the feeling of alert serenity and grounded presence that yeah. you get after 30 minutes of meditation. Okay, I love that. Yeah, I would say that that is a fantastic way to describe it and describe my experience in a, in a better way. Okay, <laughs> so... What, uh, let's just finish this up here. Number one, I want to reiterate that you created this initially just for yourself, right? Like you didn't have any intention on producing this on a large scale. You were just like, I need something better than alcohol in my life, which is yes. kind of what we've talked about, right? About creation just for yourself. And I have a theory that when we create for ourselves initially, 
that we have such a better outcome if or when we decide to, you know, bring this out into the world. I, I fully agree because like my initial recipe is different from the commercial recipe. Yeah. But my initial recipe was for me and it was what I needed at that time. And, you know, I was using not the same quality of extracts or not yeah. the same quality of ingredients that I'm now able to have access to. We use the highest quality of, of lion's mane extracts and mushrooms and like, but creating for yourself, I feel like is always the best way to start. And if that inkling, like if it feels like it's turning into like, hey, this is going to be for other people, let go of what your original creation was. Yeah. And let it evolve naturally. Into what it now what it needs, needs to be. To be. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So where can we find you? Where can we find Bodhi Bubbles? How can people get a hold of your product? Tell us all so about that. We have it for pre-order right now. Um, like I said, we're going to be doing our first production in the next two, three weeks. Um, we're targeting the end of March to have that done. Okay. And um, you can pre-order it. We have them for $3 a can for right now. They're going to go up after the pre-order. Okay. And um, yeah, shop.bodybubbles.com is our Shopify link. You can go okay. to bodybubbles.com to uh, read more about it. That's yeah. B-O-D-H-I-B-U-B-B-L-E-S.com. Hey, perfect. Thank you so much, David, for being here with us today being here with me today because you know this podcast is a way for me to create and hopefully other people get some benefit out of it right because that's the best way to create that is the best way to create <laughs> all right thank you so much and uh hopefully everybody goes and tries out Bodhi bubbles and you can see those effects for yourself awesome. bye everybody love you all love you <laughs> Thanks for joining me today. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, leave a review, and share it with someone who needs a little inspiration. Your support makes a world of difference. Until next time, keep rewriting and reigniting your story. Before we finish this podcast episode up, I want to share one more thing with you. I have a therapist and I go and see a therapist on a very regular basis. I think it is important for you, for me, and for everybody on planet Earth to seek out a qualified professional to help them. Please remember that the advice I share on this podcast is just for general purposes only. I seek out to be accurate, but I certainly cannot guarantee it, nor do I accept the responsibility for any actions taken after listening to this podcast. By listening, you agree not to hold Soulscript Studio, nor myself, Lara Titanser, liable for any outcomes. Thank you so much for understanding and go and find yourself a therapist.